Hey, so today I want to talk about my year-long journey through cancer. Um, started off in early 2022. We were still kind of in and kind of getting out of the COVID lockdown craziness. And, and for the first time in my life, I was pretty depressed. Um, wasn't sure, like, what I was going to be doing. Uh, seemed like a lot of my plans had fallen through and... It was weird, I was just kind of depressed, which is relevant because depression causes hormonal imbalances, which ultimately lead to disease, which cancer is one. But I decided to get myself out of that funk, and I started, because um, also like during the winter I just sat around and didn't eat well and watch TV and stuff, so I got a little bit out of shape, so I decided to get in shape. And I started training, I was exercising like an hour or two every day, running, push-ups, pull-ups, weight training. And I was also taking these green smoothies that was like cashews with either spinach or celery, um, sometimes beets, just really healthy raw vegetables. Um, which most of them were super high in oxalates, which I wasn't worried about because I never had a problem with kidney stones before. But uh, I was also going to the beach and sun tanning for hours a day and so getting a lot of vitamin D, which helps harden calcium. I was taking, with my smoothies, I was taking uh, B-complex vitamins, but it, the pills were mostly calcium. Um, calcium carbonate so I was getting more calcium than I needed and the vitamin D was helping harden that mixed with the oxalates not to mention I was I was uh, taking coffee every day which the caffeine makes your calcium run through the kidneys more so it was a perfect storm um, even though it was, I was living pretty healthy and getting fit it was a perfect storm for a kidney stone I didn't know at the time. Um, I kept running, but I started bleeding in my urine a lot. Every time I'd go running, I'd afterwards I'd come home and I would just pee blood. And I was a little concerned. I looked it up, and most of the causes for blood in the urine were benign, so I was like, it's probably nothing. Um, so I put it off for a while. But then, like, blood clots or fleshy chunks started coming out and passing so I was like I better go to a doctor my doctor was like eh, it's probably like a urinary tract infection let's test your blood and he's like oh, no infection at all but there's blood in your urine I was like well yeah um, and then he said uh, it's probably nothing he tapped my back he's like does that hurt and I was like eh, a little I've been rubbing my back all the time from pain but he's like if that if he's like you'd be like on the floor in pain if you had anything significant so just go home and let it pass and so I went home uh, let some more time pass when I first went and saw the doctor that was June 6th of 22 and uh, yeah he's like it might be some small ones that'll pass but I kept bleeding kept passing weird stuff with not stones and so I went back and I was like, hey, we, we talked about doing a CT scan. I think we should do it because something's got to change. And so we got the scan. And I was I went from thinking it was maybe a UTI to thinking it was possibly small kidney stones. And we got the scan and they said, well, we see suspicious tissue up by your kidney. And at first they thought it was kidney cancer, like renal cell carcinoma. Um, that was just their guess. Because what, what they found was on the bottom of my kidney, right at the junction where it connects to the ureter, the tube that goes to the bladder. Um, so anyways, they're like suspicious uh, tissue, so come back for another scan. We'll do a CT scan with contrast so we can see it better. I went back in July 12th, and they could see the tumor better. They said it was 34 millimeters by 8 millimeters. And also they saw a couple of my lymph nodes were swollen. One of them, like, 
one of them like right here by the aorta. It was right in between those two main arteries and, and it was like pretty swollen. So that one was 25 by 10 millimeters, about the size of this guy, all swollen in there. Um, the suspicious tissue that they were pretty sure was cancer. So if this straw was my ureter tube, and I, I left a little red there just so you could see, but it was all the way up to the top of the tube, and it would be about that much cancer. And they did see that there was some sort of a hard stone at the center of it, a small stone, but like totally plugged with cancer. And I had a, the kidney above it was, was swollen because the urine couldn't get out. And so that stuff was just going back into the system, but it was, it was not happy. And you can see on the image that it, it was kind of frumpy. So they're like, it's probably cancer. And I was like, oh man, worst case scenario. It's not, it, it wasn't an infection or kidney stones. It was cancer. Uh, so my dad had kidney cancer, um, and his sisters and kind of runs in the family that a lot of people in my family have Lynch syndrome, which is a genetic predisposition to get cancer. Um, and so I was like, oh, that's not cool. Probably cancer. We had to make sure they were like 90, 95% sure that it was cancer, but they had to get a, a biopsy just to make sure. And my doctor sent me to a urologist uh, in town and he said we need to do a cystoscopy for a biopsy to go in and take a, a bit. Um, I was like, oh, I heard you can do that with needles in the back. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're going to go up through your ure urethra, make our way through the bladder, up the ureter, all the way to the kidney, and we're going to take some samples from there. And I was like, oh, I do not, that does not sound fun. But he's like, that's the only way, that's what I'm doing. So I was like, okay. So on August 11th, I went in, they did the biopsy that they put me under and took several samples and found out that it was cancer. They switched it from renal cell to urothelial papillary carcinoma, which is, I guess, a type of bladder cancer technically because it's up in the tube. Um, but it's all it's carcinoma. So that was confirmed. Um, after they took the biopsy, I had to have a stent, like a tube, all the way up to my kidney from my urethra for two weeks. And that was like torture. That was one of the worst things I've had to go through. And then when they yanked it out, that was also horrible. I was in so much pain the first day. I couldn't urinate. I felt like my kidney was going to burst. And so I went back into the urologist and he basically called me a wuss. He's like, most people just man up. Most people just take it. Um, but he, like the stent was in there, but he shoved another catheter in there to empty out my bladder. And it was so horrible. Um, but I was glad he was able to do that at that point. Um, wouldn't wish that on anybody. Uh, but I guess it, it proved that I did actually have cancer. I was also referred to an oncologist in town. Um, went and talked with him, asked him what I should do. I was like, should I do anything with my diet? And he's like, well, have you lost any weight? And I was like, yeah, when I, when I first heard that I probably had cancer from the CT scan, I started, uh, I went out and got a few, a handful of supplements, some of which I talk about in my supplement video, and I, and I started trying to eat cancer-fighting foods, which I have a video about that too. Um, I wasn't like doing a perfect diet, but I was, I was trying. And uh, so I asked him like, should I be doing anything? And he's like, have you lost any weight? And I was like, yeah, I'm down probably like 10 pounds from when I found out. But I was losing weight before anyways because I was trying to. But he's like, oh, you need to keep the weight on because when we give you chemo, you're going to lose a bunch of weight. So you need to do whatever you can, like drink Ensure, which is like a chocolate drink they give to people to keep weight on. It's full of sugar. I've done a lot more studies since, but I, I knew even then that cancer eats sugar and that that was the the last thing I should be taking is some sugary shake um, but that was his advice my oncologist and as a disclaimer um, I'm not giving anyone else 
um, medical advice. I'm just sharing my story of what I did, and I hope it's helpful for people. But uh, yeah, so he also had me go get an, an MRI because I was having some dizzy spells, and he had me go get a PET scan. And so like I was just saying, they've known that sugar feeds cancer for a long time, ever since they made the PET scan, which is they take a little bit of sugar water and they add radioactive isotopes to it so that they can trace the sugar and then they put it in you and then they scan you and watch where this radioactive sugar goes so it goes to your brain your brain lights up it goes as you start to get rid of it it goes to your kidneys down the ureters and in the bladder and so you see all of that light up um, but it also goes right to a tumor because tumors, that's their favorite food is sugar and they just like suck it up. So that's, that's how a PET scan works. And so any doctor should know that and they should not be telling their patients to take sugar. Um, any oncologist should know that. Anyways, so I did the PET scan and they weren't able to see the tumor because it was right there where the the fluid was going through my kidney anyways. They did, however, notice that the lymph nodes that were swollen were slightly smaller. Um, I was not told that. I found out much later when I went in and got the papers for it. In fact, I was lied to about it, which I'll get to in a second. But So I was talking with my oncologist and... He wanted me to also talk with his buddy oncologist from over at Stanford. Um, and the two of them were kind of double dipping, it seemed like, on my insurance, both meeting with me. It didn't seem necessary, but um, they decided I should do 12 weeks of chemo with cisplatin, which is the strongest chemotherapy on the market, and another one that is usually used for uh, like ovarian cancer and breast cancer um, but they decided a mix of that would be good for me to take for 12 weeks and that I would do that while I still had both of my kidneys and then they would after the the chemo therapy they would cut out my right kidney and ureter so uh, they weren't expecting the chemo to actually get rid of it they were planning on cutting me up anyways but they wanted to do the chemo just in case it might have spread and they were worried because of the swollen lymph nodes that it had spread my lymph nodes i, I did have a, a couple of them that were swollen and they were trying to take care of stuff going on um then they they switched it up and they're like oh you have you probably have lynch syndrome because of your your family history so we could maybe do immunotherapy and I was like, oh, that sounds better than chemo, because I know chemo sucks. Um, I was going to do it, because that's what my doctors told me to, and I had cancer. <clears throat> but, um, so they they took the some samples of my biopsy, and they were like, oh, because of protein markers, we think now that you don't have Lynch syndrome. And I was like, oh, that's weird. Okay. Um... So I was like, dang, I can't do immunotherapy anymore. I guess I have to do the chemo. Then I went in for another biopsy of the lymph node, which I was really concerned about because the urologist said it's right there and it's dangerous a dangerous spot to get to. And so I was like, I think that there's other lymph nodes they can test. I, I'm, I'm not going to let them do that when I went in. And I was like, which lymph node is it? Because... I'm making a personal decision about that, and the nurse is like, uh, the, the doctor's too busy to see you. And I was like, well, I don't want to be on the on the operating table. I, I don't want to, I want to know. And she's like, she's like, it's your body. And I was like, I know it's my body. But uh, she's like, anyways, doctor finally was like, yeah, it, it's just the one lymph node. That's the one we're going to do, and it's right by your aorta. aorta. And I was like, that sounds dangerous. I don't want to die on the operating table. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I'm super, like, good at it, and you'll be totally fine, I promise. And eventually, I gave in, and I was like, okay, let's do it, and um, got on the operating table, oxygen, they had a live CT scan going, and then the doctor's like, they, they already had, like, 
um, like I was almost ready to like fall asleep. I had like a mask on and stuff. And then the doctor comes in. And he's like, "Oh, actually, like it is too dangerous. Like I might kill you." And I was like, "Oh, then I'll just go home." <laughs> no thanks for that. Um, so didn't get the second biopsy, but they already. That was just to see if it was spreading. Um, and so they were like, well, we'll just assume it is spreading and have you do the chemo and stuff. Uh, so I was trying to follow a cancer-fighting diet, but I wasn't doing the best. And I, I knew that I needed to do a long-term fast, something like a three-week, 21-day fast, followed by some other fasts. I just hadn't done it yet. Is it takes a lot of willpower and it's hard to do that um, and I knew that because I had done some fasting before and uh, so anyways I was like I gotta bite the bullet I was like they're gonna do chemo and I was like just in case it helps before I do the chemo I'm gonna do a long fast and see what happens so I did the 21 day fast just water and some supplements so I started the 21 day fast right after eating a bunch of candy on Halloween that was really dumb. I had like a whole day of eating candy. But then I started a fast and um, on November 2nd, I actually started it. And then November 22nd, I went in and got, I ended it and got a CT scan. Uh, this time they didn't give me both dimensions of the tumor, but it went from eight millimeters to two millimeters, one of the dimensions. Uh, which was like a 75% reduction in the tumor. So it got way smaller. And that was after the three-week fast. So I was like, awesome, that helps, that works. I'm going to keep doing more of that. But uh, that CT scan I got at a different radiologist. It was in-house at the same place as my oncologist. And uh, the lady was upset with me because I declined the, the contrast Um and she's like, I'm the doctor, I know what's best. And I was like, eh, my body, I don't want contrast this time. Um, you can see in, in the write-up that she didn't say a whole lot. She's like, oh, we couldn't see because we didn't have the contrast. But um, she did give the dimension of two millimeters, which shows that it was, like, way smaller. But then in the summary it says... Uh, she, what does she say? Um, so she said, there's not a significant change. And I was like, 75% is significant to me. But that's what she wrote on there. So then I, I kept doing some more fasts. Uh, smaller ones. I did a five-day fast, a couple three-day fast, one and two-day fasts. And doing one meal a day in between those fasts. And some of them, I was just hungry and ate all day. But... I did a little bit more fasting. I kept taking the supplements and stuff. Then I was putting off the chemo. The doctors kept calling me and they're like, you need to set up chemo. I actually did set set up a time and then reschedule because it was the holidays and my kid's birthday is coming up. And I was like, I don't want to be on chemo for that. I'm going to hold off. Um, they're like, you can't keep holding off. You got to do it. So on January 5th of 23, I went in for another CT scan and the the tumor went from 34 by 8 millimeters to 6 by 2 millimeters and I got a little visual so here's here's the original tumor this black part and then this is what the tumor became that this little black part between June 23rd and this one on January 5th that's how much my cancer shrank from fasting and supplements. Um, I also had uh, the lymph nodes shrink. Oh, yeah. The, the guy th that was going to do the second biopsy of the lymph node, um, he's like, he's like, you got to do this. Don't back out. Um, is it because you're uh... I was like, have my lymph nodes changed at all? And he's like, they've gotten worse. And uh, that that actually like scared me enough to be like, okay, let's let's do this. But he lied. The PET scan said it was smaller. So I kept getting other lies. The doctors kept lying to me. 
Um, doctors are the ones I've been working with, especially oncologists. I feel like they're either morons, incompetent, or they're evil because they just care about money and not people. That's, from my experience, what I found out. Anyways, um, so the, the, the main lymph node that they're worried about in here is about the size of this cashew. And then on January 5th, it had gone down to a, more of a normal lymph node size, like that. Um, the aortocaval lymph node went from 25 by 10 millimeters to 16 by 4 millimeters. There was another one that was swollen that that was about the size of this walnut and went down to this size of a small walnut. So that was like really encouraging. Um, so I decided to keep doing what I was doing. But both of the oncologists, the one in my hometown and the one at Stanford, um, they both kept calling me, trying to convince me that I needed to do chemotherapy and surgery. Um, in fact, the one at Stanford, he's the same one. When I first started, I asked him about... So, so I t asked the one about diet, and he said I should take Insure. I asked the other one about fasting, and he's like, oh, there's a lot of buzz about fasting, but that's pseudoscience, so don't do any of that. Um, this guy from Stanford, he says to me... Uh, on the phone is like, hey, I don't want to scare you. He's, he's talking to me forever, trying to convince me. I don't want to scare you, but if you don't do the chemo and the surgery, you're going to be dead in a year. And I was like, eh, that's nice, man, but um, I'm doing my own thing. And I tried to be nice to him on the phone. I don't know why, but uh, I was like, I'm done. I'll call you guys if I need you. Like, what I'm doing is, is helping. I was like... I don't know why you don't think, like, 75% reduction is significant, but to me it is, and so I'm going to keep doing this for a while. March 6th, um, I got my labs back from a geneticist um, from Stanford, and they said, I do have Lynch syndrome, so I did, I didn't, and then I did again, but genetically, yes, I have Lynch syndrome, so I'm predisposed to get certain types of cancer. Then, yeah, April 3rd, of 23, I got another CT scan. This time, I went back to the other radiologist that um, is a different company, not as, not associated with my oncologist, um, and they couldn't see any cancer. the The cancer was gone, and it was with uh, contrast again to make sure that they could see more. Um, but they said there was a small stone left. So I'm doing all these like natural remedies. And I kind of switch over to taking the juice of a whole lemon once in the morning, once at night, and then taking like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in my water every day. This protocol is very similar to one I had done years back um, for a gallbladder cleanse, which uh, some people try to debunk, but it worked for me to get rid of my gallstones, which saved me from another surgery, and I was able to keep that organ as well. And I was also putting a pinch of Epsom salt in my water every day. Um, and that combination, after like five days of doing that, I passed a stone. Um, and the stone... I've got another little visual aid here from an apricot kernel. Um, it, looked, it looked like a clump of brown sugar, kind of. Um... It was like I crumbled it in my fingers. I should have saved it, but it just, I just like crumbled it. Um, but it looked something like this. It's a, I don't know if you can tell how big that is, but passed that through my urethra. Um, but you can imagine like if you, if you have cancer tissue and then you have this guy stuck in the middle of it this calcium oxalate stone it's not nice then the cancer disappeared but there's still a stone and then and then I uh, I passed it in the toilet so that was great um and the last couple months since then like I haven't I have to admit I haven't been doing 
the best at eating good. I've been eating some chocolate and stuff that I shouldn't eat, but I was just so excited that like the cancer is gone and I want to live life. Um, but like, like my uh, primary care physician said, um, like it's in remission or it's gone, but you got to keep living a good lifestyle to make sure like you don't get cancer. And with the Lynch syndrome, like I do need to do that. So I know, at least I know what to do. I could eat better, but I know what to do. Um, and uh, that's my story. A whole crazy year of going through cancer and lots of getting poked and blood tests. Uh, a lady came from Stanford to take like five vials of blood. They never gave me um, any information about what they saw with that blood, but yeah, it was crazy. Anyways, um, it's my story and I hope it helps somebody. Later.